and prayers is needed and all of that good stuff. All right. Okay. Ready? Hi. Hi. Declare. Declare. World, World peace. peace. <laughs> Thanks, Allie. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's Allison from Rockville Center, Long Island News. Let's go from there to the land that time forgot, where the residents are coming out of the primordial goo. Yes, indoor plumbing, still a thing of the future. Electricity, never heard of it. Fire, they do have it, but barely. We're talking about Silver Springs, Nevada, the land that time forgot, the home of the longest continuous burning tire fire. On line one, <laughs> Varen. Hey, Aaron, what's up? Hey, we, we have an electricity advancement. We do get electricity when we can get that squirrel to stay in the wheel long enough to, to run for more than five minutes. Uh, uh, well, we'll get a little bit of electricity going on there. Um, you know, I was calling because you had this live Facebook thing going on. Uh, you know, I'm going to do a little shameless self-promotion this morning. Uh -huh. And uh, now I'm hearing that. You know, there's another issue. And, and perhaps I, I have a Periscope TV. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, platform. It's a lot, and that's a live feed. It works very similar to. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure exactly how Facebook uh, uh, works, but I'm. Uh, I, I you've got to assume they have a, a live interaction there, and, and where Periscope TV does the same thing. People can actually type questions in, and you can read them on on, on your screen while you're watching. Uh, uh, while they're watching you, I should say. Um, Randall brought something up, though, the, the McKinley Park School. Yes. Um, for people who don't understand the significance of that, and you were right, Dennis, it is Jones Street. It is Jones um, Here's the significance of this building and this area. And, and I have always felt that this part of Reno, all along that river, from that area right in there, Idlewild, all the way down, that needs to be preserved. There's a lot, a lot of history and architectural history there. The architect, George Ferris, 1909, is when this uh, part of Reno was developed. That, that's what's so significant about it. For those that don't recognize the name George Ferris, he's the same guy that gave us the carnival ride that goes around in a circle. Oh, it's the Ferris. kind of a huggy body, kissy face, you know, carnival ride. You know, yeah, called the Ferris wheel, yeah. Um, but that's who did this building. And this section, this is why it's significant for Reno. That is the original Spanish quartet. It's it's that style of architecture, and, and it's got a very significant part in the heritage of the city of Reno. For and maybe that'll encourage some more people to, to go out. It is something that should be preserved uh, and, and should be taken a look at uh, what's going on. Well, there. let's not confuse people. The, the McKinley Arts Center is it is it is the yeah. hub of the arts and uh, and culture. What he's talking about is uh, out at the uh, Cullen Ranch, the old ranch house there, where you see the nursery and stuff, the big house, yeah. almost on the corner of, uh, what would it be, Mayberry and McCarran. That's the one that, uh, that's the one that they, that's on the historic registry, and some developer wants to uh, surround that and put a bunch of condos and apartments in there. So that's what they're arguing about, and the meeting is at the McKinley Arts Center, so... Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to confuse people. The McKinley Arts Center. Oh, uh, I, I tuned in. I, I tuned in kind of in the middle of what was going uh, on. I, I didn't catch him when he came on. Mm -hmm. I, I heard him talking about that. I said, "Wait a minute. Wait, they can't. Uh, uh, that that yeah, that that is a special place." Um, I, I, you know what? I think I know that building that you're talking about, though, out in Cogden Ranch. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a great yeah, old, a, old ranch house, historic. It's just a beautiful facility out there. It, rival, yeah, that, it rivals Bowers Mansion. I mean, it's that that pretty, that beautiful. Is it the same style architecture? Yeah, with the porch, and I, it looks very and, similar. And the columns and the balustrade. Yeah, that uh, uh, man, that that would be. Uh, I, I do believe I know that building. Uh, um, uh, I'll have to look that up so I don't sound stupid again. <laughs> you're, you're fine. <laughs> If, but, if sounding uh, stupid you know, was hey, a crime, I'd have been in prison a long time ago. I don't know if anybody saw it. We got snow uh, uh, Saturday morning, a foot of snow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Pictures on the website. Uh, uh, off to the right-hand side, you'll see a little slide from the Pavis White Neva Ranch. I've been taking pictures. Uh, some of these pictures, I mean, we're talking Christmas card worthy.
the uh, uh, when the big snow fell, uh, falls happened. It, it was just unbelievable. Uh, some of the scenery and the views that were out here with, with everything covered in snow. It, it was pretty awesome. Well, some of the uh, ski resorts got over five and a half feet, and now they're saying some will stay open as late as possibly Fourth of July. So that's well, how you much know, that's snow. Kind of a big thing here. The Fourth. Mm. Strawberry French toast. That is a big thing, and I, I would not be surprised this year to ski this uh, uh, HamiltonSkiLine.com. If you want to uh, uh, ski up in the minute ski, this guy has been traveling all over the West Coast, Mark Hamilton. Um, he was in Vail uh, a couple weeks ago uh, in Utah, up in Montana. He's just been traveling all over the United States with these Thorpe, him and his brother, uh, uh, to, to write articles for his blog and uh he just saying everywhere is having a great year for skiing and yeah, no doubt no doubt well aaron we're we're gonna have to run to a traffic report we got the trooper here but i'm looking for i've only seen it one time since i've lived in this area and that was the bikini skiing during the fourth of july it was a competition up at uh I think it was in ski incline back then, but uh, I would like to see that again on the 4th of July. So let's start pushing somebody to do that. Bikini well, skiing. I think my back, uh, my back will be uh, a lot better by then. And I got, I'll do the camera up right now. I'll get the lens cleaned up right now. Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, over the over the weekend, found some really cool planners. 775-230-9915. Awesome planners from, from around here. Stuff that is uh, going to be repurposed. That's the theme for planters this year. Repurposing Refuge. HolidayLLC.com, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a great day. Let's have a great time. Let's all be safe out there. All righty. That's Aaron uh, from Alliday LLC. Repurposing things right now for planters. I've done that myself. I've got some... Uh, some large pot things. I've uh, picked up a uh, old wheelbarrow to add to the one that I have in the back, and uh, they're becoming planters. So let's go from Aaron and Alliday to. There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout who shot a child. Hey, hey, hey! That was me today on the radio. Kind of promo and a couple things tomorrow. Don't forget to tune in to GMO Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. GMO Tuesday. Give you a little peek. I'm uh, going to talk about, I might surprise you this week. I may surprise you. Living non-GMO, the non-GMO verified project. Are those two websites one and the same? Are they pulling a page out of Monsanto's propaganda game? Let's double up, double dip. Get the information out there that we want you to hear. Not saying that non-GMO living or non-GMO verified project is a bad thing or spreading lies or anything. Just kind of looking at what's out there, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we're going to talk about uh, uh, some some more of the reports coming in on Monsanto. Uh, uh, Monsanto's been accused of contaminating other people's cropland with illegal, illegal. GMO products. We'll touch on that a little bit tomorrow also. Uh, and we're also going to talk once again about my Twitter campaign. My Twitter campaign to the Donald Trump, the EPA, Scott Pruitt, RFDA, and RUSDA. Yes, a Twitter campaign going on. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, repurposing. I posted a video this morning. Repurposing items for different things. We got strawberries. What is summer without strawberries? Whether it's a daiquiri, whether it's a margarita, whether it's a strawberry pie, a strawberry shortcake, a strawberry muffin, I don't care what it is, a bowl of strawberries, or as I'm having for breakfast, strawberry fresh toast. <laughs> hey, it's going to be a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. You bet. I think I hear them lovebirds out there chirping away. Missy's been banging on the door to go out all day. I got to get back to work. So I got to let you go. Going to be a great day. Let's all have a great time, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, let's all be safe out there.